And welcome everybody here on Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Swift Foot Ramp. We're going to uh, go back to Feel the Rush Ramp with Mina, Swift Foot, Voices of the Old Ones, all that kind of stuff. We're going to have a crazy top end deck. Um, it's going to be our next deck here on the Donation Deck Day. Timo Burn didn't work out too well, didn't look too good. Uh, we, we ran into three opponents that had just perfect hands. Um, that just not many decks would have stopped, honestly. And then we ran into two go hard opponents, and go hard's a really difficult matchup for that burn deck. So, um, went 0 5 with that. Decided not to really post that video with it just being like the 0 5. So, hopefully, this one will do better. But you can see our top end we got Feel the Rush, Swift Foot, Voices of the Old Ones, um, two pretty fun cards. Our champions are going to be Trundle Trindamir or Trundlemir, if you prefer. Three Ancient Yetis in here as like a flex slot, um, deciding to go with them where they can, um, in the in the mid game, you can just kind of unload a bunch of Ancient Yetis or play a cheap Ancient Yeti and then some other impactful spell. For the most part, for an early game, we're going to be wanting to ramp to get to that top end because uh, looking at our curve, um, most everything's going to be very expensive, <laughs> right? Like we don't have early game much at all. So in order to get to that top end and not get ran over, we're, we're going to need to ramp. So we got our three Weirding Stones, our three Catalyst of Aeons, and we're uh, ramping up to those top end cards. So let's see how it does. We'll go play our five games in rank, try to get our rank back up. Here we go. Yeah, like, I, I do think that Plaza is overpowered, but also I think that the there's a lot of, mm, how do I say it? Like, the, the other cards in the Plaza deck are not overpowered compared to what everybody else is doing, right? So, like, it's not it's not that just, like, Plaza decks always win, because it's only one card in, out of, in the deck out of 40. Does that make sense? Like, the, the rest of the cards in Plaza decks aren't usually as good as other cards in other decks. All right, so I like... I, I'm going to just... I think I'm going to keep all three of these other top end. We're going to mulligan this. I guess we can mulligan Trindamir. Uh, the Trindamir was the one I was wondering about, but I like keeping just the two Ancient Yetis. Cool, we'll just have three Ancient Yetis, so... Um, later on in the game, we are going to unload a bunch of Ancient Yetis. Now, their deck, you know, Fjord Shen, amazing, right? Like, I'm... Uh, Fjordshun's a great deck. You, know, we, you can see like we went 4-1 with it earlier. I hope they have like a slower hand where they're going to be kind of trying to set up like more Fiora kills, which is what they usually do. They usually don't necessarily put a ton of pressure on your Nexus. All right, that was good Catalyst of Aeons. Let's get some more mana. So probably be about another two to three turns before I start playing these Ancient Yetis. Ideally, that is. If they play Shen, I'm definitely going to have to con concuss a Palma Shen. I hope not, right? I prefer them just to like attack and not have Shen. Make life easier. I guess I could play a 4-mana Ancient Yeti, because it only costs 1 mana right now, considering I'm only saving 3 spell mana total. But by not playing it, means they don't play stuff either. Okay, uh, let's see, now I have a 3-mana card, and then I have a Deny available. We can do that. The eye of twilight sees all. Let them eat souls. I never hold back. Try me. Okay, so this is where we'll start going with our concussive palms.
I, I kind of want to have, like, Deny be able to protect Icequake. That's going to require two more turns, or at least... Show them what we're made of. Like, this isn't that, like, that great against Sharp Sight. Let's do this, because I'm definitely considering about, like, just, like, which one to stun. I kind of want to stun the Shen. I think this is a better stun. Like, the Shen buffs up, you know, the Shen buffs up the Caretaker, the Scythria buffs up everything. If I, st basically, if I stun Shen, then I have a 3-2... And then they go Scythria, Fiora. Fiora's a 4-4. The 4-4 challenges the 3-2 for free. Um, this way, they still challenge the 3-2 for free with the barrier, though. But if they do that, then I have my 5-5 five five that blocks Shen. So that's kind of difficult for them to do, but... Okay, got good use of a deny. As it had to be. For the thrill of hey, Togrek. I don't want to pass and let them just go to attacks with this. Yeah, that that is a, yeah, that's what I've been suggesting for a long time there, Togrek. Yeah, they did exactly what I suggest suggested. Ooh, they wasted all that mana, that's good. Yeah, that's that was that's what I that was my call with the Packer bags. Have it cost five. Two worlds, one balance. Alright, we're going to do the same thing we did last time. I definitely wish I could do this plus the Ice Quake this turn. So I go. Let them eat souls. Try me. Nature blesses her followers. Counter and strike. Unfortunately, all four of these cards don't really do anything. Even the coldest heart. I guess I could cast Avalanche first. Yeah, maybe I should have just done that. Maybe I should just cast the Avalanche. Yeah, I should have just done this first. I think it's worth it getting rid of the caretaker that they, they gets a, a good block and so they're, they're certainly playing like they have sharp sights. Nope, single combat. That's good. This will be quick. That's good for me. That's that's a bad use of their single combat. Like if I'm them, I'm having that 7-2 fight the Trindomir. So that's good for me that that we had the five five out that had them do that. My blade calls. Speaking of good for me, harsh winds was a good draw. Um, but we're gonna need we're gonna need some more stuff. These cards don't do anything. Stand for what's right. It 
must be done. Let them eat swords. On guard. Avalanche, not a good draw. That didn't look so good. My good sword hand. Okay, so how do we do against scouts? So I think I think the sentries are probably okay. I guess they're they're okay. Let's we'll try keeping them and we'll leave in the top end. Maybe I'm supposed to keep Field of Rush? We haven't we haven't seen Field of Rush. Yeah, and that, that is just like the card that we need. We play in build rules, son. They're out there. I'll spot them. What kind of Great spell would that be? Oh, uh, okay, so that's Valor. Right, that's got to be Valor. Blinding Assault, so. All right, we know they have that. Um, we're gonna try Weirding Stones into Trundle, but, you know, like Misfortune, yeah, Grand Plaza, Valor. It's a little rough, but I do have Concussive Palm. Okay, so Relentless Pursuit was burned by the, uh, by the Pool Shark. I kind of want to deny this. Now we know we know they still have blinding assault. So like even if I deny this, they go they valor kill my weirding stones and then hit me for three. But we don't have like that many targets for deny. So I could go yeah I guess I still have sentry afterwards. So I go deny then sentry. That's not so bad. So. Old eyes still see far and clear. I'm one of the good guys, but not that good. Fresh out of mercy. Okay, well, they, they don't get the two attacks at least. Do you think I should just pass right here? Just burn the mana. Yeah, they could definitely have repost block. That's so. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and just have them burn the mana now. So we can deny the valor. That's a, that's okay with me. Well, I guess that yeah, that's that's okay with me. I don't mind taking a little bit extra damage. Oh, that is not okay. Always forward. Round them up. I mean, there's not really anything to palm. Look out for reavers. Love ya. My steel is yours. This is our way. Oh, come on. Relentless Pursuit. So my plan here was like double Weirding Stones. We have nine mana next turn. I go Ice Pillar and Swift Foot. And, you know, Swift Foot, you know, like bounce some stuff. Obviously, Relentless Pursuit. The game's just over. OK, 
Okay, so another burn deck. This one, you know, this one won't be, like, attacking multiple turns all the time. Which will be good for us. This one does have, like, more burn spells like Decimate, like, where Deny can counter a Decimate. But I'm still going to mulligan the Deny, I think. But, like, that's the thing. It's like, if, if we can stabilize, Deny will be an important card to have on, like, turn 8, turn 9 to stop Decimates. But I think we have to kind of worry more about getting to that point of the game. While I like Icequake a whole lot, it does cost 8 mana. Um, that just kind of seems like too much mana. I mean, so that's still like turn 5 we could play it. Alright, Kindly Tavern Keeper is good. Yeah, Ramp Cards, Avalanche, and Kindly Tavern Keeper would be the best. Nothing escapes my watch. War Mason, reporting for duty. Make the Empire proud. Um, Swiftfoot, feel the rush. Would have been helpful. Like these kind of cards would have been helpful against like Fior Shen earlier, um, or like a slower deck, but not so much against this this fast kind of deck. Welcome to the tipsy hour. All right, very good Kindly Tavern Keeper. No one's the wiser. And now we can have Yeti next turn, Trundle the following turn. I've got meat bigger than you. Alert the villains. There's plenty of killing left. We're not looking too bad. With Yeti into Trundle. Mm. And Concussive Palm's nice to stop a um you know, an open attack if they just if they play something like a gangplank or something like that here in open attack, then we don't have to play the trundle, we can play Concussive Palm. <laughs> Let's talk about your If I do go palm next turn, our mana situation is looking at like six and two. That's okay. Yeah, that's true. I mean like yeah, catalyst that's certainly a possibility. That catalyst would say would also, you know, kind of cancel out the grenadier. But going this way, we cancel out the Grenadier plus have the ability to heal our Nexus for three. So I'm, I'm happy with this. I, I think that this will I think this will work out. These are I'm happy with this. So Gangplank's at four. My boat, my room. Mr. Bloodboss! Get something for him! I see everything. Alright, we'll take that. Alright, so we'll just double ramp. And now we have 12 mana, so I can feel the rush. Um, I guess it would make sense to play the Ice Pillar first, though. And then we can feel the rush or Swiftfoot, if we determine that Swiftfoot's the course of action. 
But I think it would make more sense to cast Feel the Rush. And this should be lethal. Yep. There we go. One and two. All right. Got to win. Didn't have to worry about the multiple attacks with scouts or Fior Shen doing all of its cool things. So I wonder how we do against the Zoe deck like this. I could certainly see Zoe being like, you know, like a turn one Zoe us never really being able to kill it and that killing us. I could certainly see that. I'm glad they don't have the attack token on turn one. I'm glad about that as far as like Zoe killing us is concerned. Um, so when Swiftfoot says recall three enemies, does that include landmarks? I'm assuming that's a no on the landmarks for enemies. Escapes my watch. I can still play Weirding Stones next turn just fine. For the homestead. Maybe I should be waiting here, but again, I have Concussive Palm. Strength of the sun and my faith are one. Both of them together are one. Hopefully, no single combat. Cool. So I'm, I'm assuming Swiftfoot cannot bounce Grand Plaza, right? Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. I'm just too worried about like right there. Like if, if I'm my opponent, like if I pass right there, if I'm the opponent, I'm not attacking. I I just I just pass and I I waste all this mana. Like I they they didn't really have it. Like they only had a Solari Priestess. They really didn't have like much incentive to attack. And so that's what I'm really worried about. Like I did I couldn't I don't I didn't want to pass priority and risk that happening. And all we lost was a Weirding Stones, which which is only like which only does any, want anything for just this turn. Um, right now I can pass though. Like I'd, I'm not really worried about wasting this mana. I bear a message from. Oh, hey, what's that? For the thrill of battle. Yeah, this isn't bad. I I don't need to really kill any of these things. Like, besides Zoe, I guess. They're just going to be playing things, yeah, like like that. Like, they're just going to be playing units on top of their units. So they've had two Solari Priestess, so they have two um, Celestial cards that cost between four and six that we don't know about. They also have a random dragon. We don't know if that, if Egghead Researcher created that dragon or not. Um... That's a very good random dragon, Eclipse Dragon. And if they if they open attack and hit me with the Zoe, then you know they're not doing anything with the Grand Plaza. So that's ahead. that's the good news.
But why not? Yeah, like I, I didn't really want my my Trindamir and Sunforger trading and everything. So that was the best Obliterate card they could have. They haven't had any Invoke cards for, like, the expensive ones. They haven't had, like, the 9-mana Obliterate 2 Invoke card. And Harvey down here. That's why I'm kind of leaned over. <laughs> if you're wondering, like, if you're wondering, like, what what is he doing? I'm I'm petting my dog, who's laying on the ground next to me. In Avarosa's name. This is gonna be fun. Because like even yeah, so like even if they hush like one of these, like it's not hush isn't the end of the world for me. Wow. That's it? Just take it? No hush? Wow. They never stood a chance. That was not what I was expecting. Just no resistance. Plaza. Again, I think Plaza is going to be pretty tough just like the scouts. Like this kind of deck. Because if, if they can get multiple attacks going, that's where we are going to struggle. So very easy mulligan decision though. We'll keep the, the Tavern Keeper. Mulligan the eight and nine mana cards. Okay, so I can I can play like Sentry on two and then Weirding Stones on three, or I could save spell mana on two, play like Catalyst on three. There's a kill in the air. Sentry on two is hard. good. I can keep them from attacking with the Bark Beast. We'll just go with this Weirding Stones on three. Certainly hope no... Hey, how about that? No Grand Plaza. That's good news. And Avalanche is good news also. Okay. We'll go with that. So if they go Sharp Sight, yeah, so they go Sharp Sight Lucian, they save Lucian, but we do kill the Bark Beast that would have been a 3-3. Three, three. Now, this allows me, as long as Weirding Stones doesn't die, which it shouldn't, this should allow me to have Ice Quake next turn for 8 mana. And so we can try to kill this Lucian next turn. So now basically... They had to have Sharp Sight, which they did. Now they have to have, like, another Sharp Sight. Which hopefully they won't have. Okay. Ah, uh, Scout. So you can see how our deck struggles against multiple attacks, though. <laughs> right? Yep. I'll do it. Whenever you're not blocking, decks that get to do all this multiple attacking, they are kind of rough. So yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I wouldn't be too comfortable playing this kind of deck. This is a very polarizing deck. Basically, you're going to have some matchups that are really good and your deck looks great against, and you're going to have other matchups... As we saw there with Scouts, with Lucian, um, Lucian Plaza, Fiora Shen, those are all really difficult to beat. And so you're, you know, so like you're going to have really polarizing matchups where you either like win pretty easily or get destroyed. And you don't have like too much that you can do about that uh, with, with playing a list like this. So 
so that's why I, I'm not really too big of a, like, you know, tournament wise, I guess you could, you could, some people like that tournament wise as, as like, cause the, they can try to try to get it. So like this deck is matched up against, um, the matchups that it's, that it's quite good against, but myself, I don't really like having decks that are that polarized. Um, because you know, like what if you, what if you play against a, an opponent that just has, you know, like scouts and Fiora Shen and Lucian, <laughs> uh, Lucian Plaza. And like, that's, that's all three of their decks are like the two Plaza decks and Fiora Shen. Then, uh, you know, you just get the auto loss. This version here with Mina Swiftfoot and Deny was really good against other Field of Rush decks. That's kind of where this, this deck kind of came about is when Field of Rush was really popular before Trundle got nerfed. And before Zoe and Mortar and Grand Plaza entered um, the metagame, there was a time where Shadow Isles Field of Rush with Trundle Trindamir was super popular, and it was a very good deck. It had the best top end of any deck. Right now, it's not very popular. I haven't played against it in a couple of weeks. It 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 really struggle you know struggles same kind of matchups and stuff. But um, that version, that you know like. This version is going to be really good against that version. So basically, that version was really popular, and so people started playing Mina Swiftfoot and um, Deny as a way to break the mirror, right? Because they go feel the rush, put two things into play. You go Mina Swiftfoot, put them back in their hand. You are really far ahead. Same kind of thing of having Deny, right? Like they try feel the rush, you have Deny. You try feel the rush, they don't have Deny for you. Um, so like these these two cards were awesome in mirror matches. Go hard is another popular deck we played against go hard a couple of times earlier like we played against it a couple of times with the team of burn that was really bad against go hard unfortunately we played against it multiple times there um, played against it with fiora shen and stuff but we didn't play against go hard with this deck this deck supposedly again we didn't play against it but this deck is supposed to be pretty good against go hard with the big overwhelms with them um, like they have like ruination but that's kind of their only answer to feel the rush like they they're going to rely on like vengeance and ruination which are good cards of course you have your deny to try to stop them but you'll have like your trundle your trindamir that have overwhelm and are very big and it's difficult for them to stop them besides those couple cards all right but there we go so that's swift foot ramp um i feel like this was a, a deck that was ba so basically kind of final final words i, I think this deck was good in a previous, you know, previous format, but since Grand Plaza, um, I wouldn't be too confident in playing this after Grand Plaza, basically. But, but before, as we saw, like with with like some of those games, but but I think this was pretty good before, and and now we know that we just found out that Go Hard um, has been nerfed a little bit. Well, with the Packer bags costing five mana, and if that means less Packer bags decks, that's also going to hurt this deck's viability as well. All right, but those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button. Uh, leave those comments. Let me know what you think of like how I was kind of wrapping up the deck here. Again, I don't have like the most experience with this deck, so I, you know I could be a little bit wrong. If you have any other um, opinions about it, if you've been playing it, you know, leave those comments. Let me know what you think of that wrap up, or um, if you have, uh, you know, let me know other strengths of the deck and um, things like that. I'd appreciate it. All right, but thank you so much for watching some Swiftfoot Ramp, and I'll see you for the next video.